One of the most important social sector programs of the center, the Jal Jeevan Mission, promises to ensure every rural household gets access to pipe drinking water by 2024. We have the Secretary of Jal Shakti, Vinny Mahajan, here with us, who is going to tell us how such a program is being implemented across the country. Welcome, ma'am, and thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you for inviting me. I start with a very basic question. When this ministry came up in 2019, there were many speculations as to uh, how are you going to ensure pipe drinking water to every rural household because water is a state uh, subject. And uh, the country itself is very diverse with every state having uh, its own set of water needs. What has been the progress on this mission so far? Uh, absolutely. Um, under the Constitution of India, water is a state subject. Uh, different states have adopted different um, approaches, have had different priorities. Uh, and uh, when the Honorable Prime Minister in his Independence Day address in 2019 uh, said that the country would move forward at speed and scale and assure um, drinking water to every rural household, different states of the country were at very different bases. Uh, there were states that had 1% coverage or less. There were states that had gone up to 99%. Uh, so uh, there was also, of course, we know that huge agroclimatic difference in the situation. Uh, there were states with ample water. Uh, there were states that are water stressed. Uh, there were states which had ample water, but that water was contaminated. We know there's geogenic, arsenic, fluoride, etc., in large parts of the country. So the challenge, therefore, was to make sure that every house in every village, and remember, there are almost 6 lakh villages in the country that we're talking about. Um, at the moment, the number of rural households is estimated at about 19.4 crores. Uh, and when we started on the 15th August 2019, there were 3.23 crore households in the country only that had reported access to piped water supply through a tap connection. So the task was humongous mm -hmm. um, and uh, involved large um, number of villages, large number of households, of course, across different kinds of situations. Uh, the good thing is that this program, the Jaljeevan Mission, uh, saw a huge um, uh, combination of factors which resulted in amazing outcomes in a short period. Mm -hmm. Those factors started primarily from political will, will at the highest levels, but going down to states, going down to villages, actually. I think every village community leadership is totally um, uh, in sync with this um, vision and mission. Uh, there was huge funding made available as per requirements. So remember that we are talking of the order of rupees 3.6 lakh crore, which was expected in 2019 to be what it would take and which government of India said that it would, you know, be uh, supporting and the states and UTs, because it's a centrally sponsored program, have totally um, participated in through their own uh, state shares as well. Mm. Uh, the, there was a need to engage with other stakeholders, but especially with communities. So all of that, the partnerships, the public uh, support, mm. the funding and the will, everything sort of came together. Mm. And this happy confluence of factors, I think, is what has you know resulted now. Right. We are so proud that a coverage of less than 17% in oh. 2019 is now a coverage of over 60%. That's amazing. And in this short span of time, over eight and a half crore rural households have received tap connections. Remember these figures, uh, this is like giving all of the USA, mm. the population of the entire USA, mm. uh, giving them tap water connections or year on year covering an entire Japan. So that's the, uh, that's the scale of the work that's been done. Also remember that it's not just giving a tap. Uh, the the program says, the mission says that there will be water at a minimum quantity, which is 55 liters per person every day. Mm -hmm. It will meet the quality norms, which is BIS 10,500. So there should be no chemical or bacteriological contamination. Uh, 
and it should be regular and sustained day after day, year after year. That's the scale of the work that's been done. So ma'am, 17% to 60% is quite massive, right? I wanted to ask you, you're a very hands-on bureaucrat. I keep tracking you, like you go to Kashmir, you go to a lot of other states. Tell me how important is the contribution of women, uh, you know, in getting white water to every household. You're giving them a sense of uh, ownership when you make them part of Pani Samitis. But actually on ground, do you see families respecting women more? Or, you know, do you see them getting... Uh, a sense of an agency, what is? what are the changes happening on ground? I think it's a no-brainer that this, um, you know, provision of tap water supply to homes has greatest impact on women's lives. We know that historically, traditionally, all over the country, it is the woman who has the responsibility of arranging water for drinking, cooking and other household purposes. Um, regardless of whether that water is available through a you know a well in her own house or she has to travel miles away with pots on her head and and, and uh, so on but it is the woman's role and young girls you know have started at a very young age going with the women to do this so in recognition of that and the fact that it is therefore uh, the woman who is in a sense the interested party but the mission sees women not just as recipients or beneficiaries of this program. They're actually leaders of this program, lead certainly on ground. So um, the concept at the conceptual state itself, it was insisted that every village must have a Pani Samiti or a village water and sanitation committee. At least half of the members should be women and also adequate representation of the disempowered sections so that at the you know at the stage of planning for the the work uh, what would the source be how many households need to be covered and all of that through the uh, oversight of the implementation phase and eventually the onm phase uh, women through the vwscs are to play a critical role in this uh, then uh, this uh, the issue of water quality, right? I mean, there's no point giving water which is still contaminated. You know, it could have uh, been treated, but if it doesn't have proper chlorination, for example, and chlorination needs to be done regularly to the right standards and so on. If that doesn't happen, you could still have bacteriological contamination and you could still have an outbreak of the or cholera and so on. So there has to be also an empowerment qua quality of water. And therefore, the concept of training women. So uh, the mission has urged all states and cities that at least five people, preferably women, uh, should be trained in every village of the country to be able to use the field testing kits that the program provides uh, across the country and to be able to determine the quality. So the idea again is that they must understand. And it's such a pleasure now when you go on ground um, there will be, you know, there will be women there and you, you know, the Pani Samiti ke members hain. Uh, they would be trained in FTKs. You ask them, what is this? They know this is for arsenic or this is for fluoride or whatever, the iron or turbidity. Um, and uh, when you talk to them about, you know, issues around water, they're totally charged, they know what it means. Uh, when you ask them, are you willing to pay user charges for this? It's an unequivocal yes. And uh, one of the great things is that we have by now this huge network of women self-help groups yes. in all rural areas. So that's something which is uh, such a powerful institution for, mm -hmm. for the water sector as well. Because we've seen anecdotally, again, wherever the states have given the women self-help groups mm. this responsibility. They've been carrying forward the OM brilliantly. Mm. So, you know, they have no difficulty saying, you know, they whatever the panchayat determines, 30 rupees per household per month or whatever. Mm. They collect that, they use that for making sure that there's a pump operator in place, uh, the scheme works well, all of that. So women's role is central, mm. I think. So if you look at it, there are some 18 crore women already who've hmm. been, you know, benefited by not having to right. go out and fetch water. The impact it has on their 
security, on their dignity, mm. on the time that's saved. You right. know, they can they can be with their children while they study. The girls have more time to study. They can do economic activity. So all of that, and they talk about this, and they tell you, and of course the impact on health, or their own health, their family's health, and so on. So it is clearly something where women are hugely impacted, but also providing the leadership in making sure that these schemes work well and work well going forward into the future as well, we hope. So ma'am, uh, the government has been generous when it comes to allocation uh, for this, for Jaljeevan mission. But like any other social sector scheme, underutilization has been a problem. Um, I know it's a state subject and, you know, looking at social, you know, very local issues like looking at contractors, making sure that they are paid on time. These are extremely micro issues that the center may not really have too much of, um, uh, you know, control over. How are you managing that? How are you expecting states to work with you um, in a nice fashion? And how are you promoting them to utilize the budgets that have been allocated to them? Um, I think our uh, relationship with the states, and especially the agencies dealing with Jal Jeevan Mission, has been a very happy um, one where we are working together. Uh, they reach out to us for whenever they have a problem. For instance, you know, when you are doing a large scheme, especially if you're bringing in water, maybe from a dam or a river through a multi-village scheme, you may be crossing a railway line. There would be national highway clearances, environment clearances. So when the states reached through to us and said that, you know, sometimes delays in the clearances, delays their projects, uh, we were able to quickly respond, put in place a portal where we encouraged all states, just let us know where you need uh, some fast tracking. We worked with our sister ministries here, Ministry of Environment and Forest, National Highways, Railways, Gale, all of them put in place, you know, fast track mechanisms, nodal persons who could be reached out to and so on, just to make sure that we all worked in sync together and we could get the clearances through as quickly as possible. Similarly, you know, there would there were issues that um, the, the the contractors faced with regard to pipes. At one point, there was this huge inflationary pressure because of global factors, and the pipes are a very important component of all water projects. So, the pipes are sometimes GIDI pipes, um, uh, and or, or they may be H HDP PVC kind of plastic based pipes. So, we worked with the Ministry of Steel, with the Department of Chemicals and Petrochemicals, with the industry. Uh, talking to them about how you know the prices are going through, what government is doing, mm -hmm. and building confidence and encouraging them that this is an opportunity when they must uh, come forward and not look to you know maybe abnormal profits because it is tempting when there's so much demand. So all of that, working with the states on making sure that there were no uh, financial constraints. So if states were not getting money from their own finance department, they would kind of whisper in our ears and then we would reach out and, and make sure that funds were released. Government of India, of course, has been very generous with its funding, but we must recognize that after all offtake, um, the ability to spend is constrained by the fact that the departments working in the states on ground have never done so much work. So uh, this is a quantum increase in the amount of work to be done, to be done in a very short time, and to be done to quality, because quality is something that we insist cannot mm. be compromised. Mm. So there have been challenges around building the human resource and improving the uptake. But the good news again is that across all states and duties, they've all been ramping up hugely. Mm. And our spending under this program, therefore, for both central and state money is put together, year after year is seeing a doubling consistently right. from 10,000 crore in the first year to 20,000 crores in the next year to 44,000 crores in the third year. And then finally last year at 92,000 crores. So this is how the scale uh, you know, is, is uh, moving up. And we are very sanguine that the efforts that are being made consistently across the country 
are yielding results and will show even more as we go forward. Right. So there is a difference in the scale and intent because successive governments have focused on bringing water close to the close to habitations. But what did what changed after 2019? Um, like you said, it's to do with the scale. Uh, but now I see a dashboard. I see that you're also doing studies on ground. There's a lot of focus on assessment, right, and outcomes. So tell us what has what is the big picture? What is changing when it comes to Jalji Bandishu? Yeah, so I think if you compare with other efforts, and there have been efforts through the years at trying to get clean drinking water to rural populations, um, some of the things, of course, are the technical parameters. So the ambition earlier was to reach at least 40 liters per capita per day. That is now a minimum of 55 liters per capita per day. Earlier, if we were satisfied with getting water into the habitation level, close to the homes, now we are not satisfied with anything less than in the home, in the home, also in the public institutions, so schools and anganwadis, for example. Mm. By the way, I must stop here for a minute. Schools and anganwadis are another huge success story under Jal Jeevan Mission. So there was a massive effort made uh, in the year 2020 onwards to get schools uh, to be covered. And from a coverage of 5% of government schools at that point in time, we've moved to 88%. From 2% of Anganwadi is covered, we've moved to 84%. And that's meant, you know, 11 and a half crore school children in government schools have benefited with this uh, clean water through taps. Um, six crore children, little ones in Anganwadi's have received additionally, uh, this is this is the addition since uh, 2019 have got this. So, um, so there is this all round effort to try and make sure that water reaches homes and institutions. There's also this huge thing about uh, engaging with communities, engaging with communities through the village water sanitation committees, making sure ONM happens, encouraging states to put in place ONM policies, to levy appropriate user charges, allow collection, use, retention at the local level. So community empowerment, the whole uh, partnership with the uh, other stakeholders. So there's so many development partners or academics. We have five professor chairs in IITs, IIMs, um, etc. Uh, we have Indian and foreign uh, development partners working with us. And we put all this information in the public domain. So there's a dashboard which gets updated every single day. You can drill down in that dashboard, whichever village you're interested in, go to the state, the district, the village, and see the names of the heads of the households who have been reported to have received tap connections under JJM. You can actually go there. Mm -hmm. So uh, the wish, the hope is to make sure that there is complete transparency. There's data available for analysis, academic research work, or just you know someone interested in what's happening in the country, public spirited mm -hmm. people. Uh, we encourage them all to look at all this mm -hmm. so that uh, everyone should know that this information is robust. If it isn't, we, we would want to take corrective action, but everything is out there. The partnerships with development partners, with academia, with civil society, we've set up the Rural Wash Partners Forum where you know development partners are pro bono working with us, working with states, trying to move things forward. So I think speed, scale, efforts at sustainability, sustainability of schemes, sustainability of sources, pulling together whole of government, whole of society. Mm. I think these are some of the uh, the unique kind of features around Jal Jeevan Mission. Of course, building on the learnings of the past on assessments of what worked, what didn't work, and what can we do now to leverage the strengths of this uh, new India? Absolutely. Ma'am, uh, lastly, I would just like to ask you, so what are the targets next for the coming, uh, targets set for the coming months? And uh, which are the states that are really uh, sort of doing some excellent work? What are the best practice, practices? So uh, by now, we have eight states in UTs which have already achieved Harkarjal status, which means each of their rural household has been fully covered. Uh, we are working with the states and UTs that have still not completed the work. There are two in the high 90 percent 
there are another two in the high 80 percent. Basically, when we started looking in some detail at, you know, what were the main um, sort of uh, points that needed attention, we found that out of 34 states and UTs that mm. we work with, uh, there are two uh, UTs which don't have any rural areas, but the remaining 34 states in UTs, uh, there were 13 that accounted for more than 95% of the balance work. Okay. So we focused on those 13. And the good news today is that there's nobody at a really low level. Mm -hmm. So there is no state in the country today mm -hmm. which has less than 30% coverage. Okay. That's um, and, you know, again, juxtapose this against mm -hmm. the country's average mm -hmm. being you know, about 17% on 15th August 2019. So all states have moved, moved ahead and um, they moved ahead in a very systematic manner. So uh, starting with identifying the sources for water supply, making the project reports, approvals, t uh, tendering and award of works, overseeing implementation. So right now we are at the stage where almost all over the country works are on at a very fast clip uh, our attention is now to making sure quality is maintained. Mm -hmm. We've taken on uh, some water and sanitation experts, um, or senior retired technical people who've been going from state to state, looking at the works in the village to see what's going working well, what's going wrong, what needs corrective action. So we are trying to give supportive supervision to the states. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are trying to guide them even as the works go on, on what they need to be careful about. every At the start of every year, we decide on their action plan for the coming year. We did that in March of this year for with each state. We sit with them, talk to them. We tell them that, look, you're looking to do maybe 10x the amount of work this year than you've done in the last year. Last year was 3x of what you did the previous year. You will need 10 times and technical manpower, people to do audit, financial, so all of that. So I think there's a lot of, um, uh, uh, a lit, even a little bit of micro engagement, but it's not with the intention to supersede the authority of the states. Eventually the states are um, uh, responsible for this subject and they're doing it uh, brilliantly, I think. Thank you very much. That was Vinny Mahajan talking to us about all that it takes to provide every rural household drinking water. Thank you so much, ma'am.